I turn now to CBS News Chief White House Correspondent Major Garrett, who was actually a congressional reporter for the Washington Times during the George H.W. Bush administration. He joins us now from Buenos Aires, Argentina, where he's actually covering President Trump at the G20 summit. Major, you were on Capitol Hill during those Bush years. When mm -hmm. you look back, remind me again, I believe it was a Democratic held majority. How did he work through that? And what oh, sure. still stands from his lasting legislation? I think it's worth pointing out that George H.W. Bush can fairly be described as the last organically bipartisan president of the United States. What do I mean by organically bipartisan? He came to it by second nature. It was not something he was forced into by political circumstances. He did not either envision or want to happen, as was forced upon Bill Clinton when he did reach bipartisan agreements with the Republican House and Senate, but that was only after suffering a bruising midterm defeat. Same thing with Barack Obama, George W. Bush. George H.W. Bush always had a Democratic House and Democratic Senate up against him. They'd lost, that is to say, the Democrats three consecutive presidential elections. They were not eager to make George H.W. Bush look good or cooperate with this new Republican White House. But Though co that cooperation was achieved nevertheless. Why? Because it, George H.W. Bush, as president, made it clear to everyone on his legislative affairs team, and I knew many of those senior Bush advisors at that time, accomplishments were key. Bipartisanship was not only natural, there was nothing scandalous or shameful about it. And you didn't get everything you wanted, but you achieved things on behalf of what the president thought was the better outcome for the American public. What was achieved in those four years? Think about this. Reauthorization of the Clean Air Act, which still is with us now. Reauthorization of the Civil Rights Act, which is still with us now. The Americans with Disabilities Act, a completely new approach to dealing with disabled Americans and retrofitting all sorts of public spaces to accommodate and make more useful not only their role in American life, but them feel that they are more a part of the American experience. Those are just three pieces of legislation. Of course, the most controversial of the time was the president's decision to raise federal taxes, but also require of Democrats spending cuts that they were not comfortable with. It was a hard fought bipartisan compromise, one that got him no favor among conservative Republicans. And a matter of fact, conservative Republicans led by then House Minority Whip Newt Gingrich broke with the Bush White House. And that began, that began if you will, Rena, the fissure within Republican ranks about hardcore anti-tax conservatism and a more moderate approach epitomized by George H.W. Bush. Well, that part of the Republican Party has quite clearly faded away and the much harder conservative anti-tax part of the party has risen in prominence. And that isn't in a direct relationship to President Trump's political ascendancy, but they're not unrelated. Major, Mr. Bush also was elected only one term. Hard to believe because right after the Persian Gulf War, he had astronomical ratings. Remind us again why that didn't end so well for him to, for a second term. There were a couple of reasons. One, it's very difficult to put four terms of any party together in the presidency. Remember, George W. Bush was essentially the third term of the Reagan presidency. A fourth term would have been very difficult by historical standards. So that's one sort of historical bit of headwinds he had to deal with. After the successful prosecution of the first Iraq war, there was a sense that many Democrats had that George H.W. Bush was unbeatable. But then a recession began to take hold. And with all of that popularity, there was also a sense within the country and among Republicans that George H.W. Bush didn't really know what to do with that popularity. There were no big, bold ideas to use or pursue with that popularity and with that political strength. Yes, he took care of unfinished business from the Reagan era, as I mentioned, Clean Air Act, Civil Rights Act, but there was no sense that George H.W. Bush's presidency had its own bright or bold or important ideas for the future. And that became a problem for him to explain it became a perception that he was dogged by, and as the recession deepened and the sense of drift politically in response to that recession deepened, his political prospects suffered considerably. Major, you're traveling with President Trump, who was supposed to give a press conference today, it was canceled because of the death yep. of Bush 41. I want to play a bite for you of what President Trump had to say about Bush's passing. We extended our best wishes and uh, 
He was. He was a very fine man. I met him on numerous occasions. He was just a high-quality man who truly loved his family. One thing that came through loud and clear, he was very proud of his family and uh, very much loved his family. So he was a terrific guy, and he'll be missed, and he led a full life and a very exemplary life, too, I will say. And we've decided, as you know, we're going to have a big press conference today, which I actually look forward to because we've made tremendous progress at the G20 with many nations. And we were going to have a very big press conference. And out of respect for President Bush, we've uh, canceled it here and we'll have it back in Washington at some time in the near future, sometime after the funeral services. Okay. Do you regret any of your comments about Bush or family? Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Major, we know President Trump and the Bush family have not had a warm relationship. President Trump wasn't invited no. to Barbara Bush's funeral. Do we know if President Trump has been invited? Uh, to President uh, Bush's funeral, yes, he will attend. The White House made that clear, made a statement to that effect, and the president was in phone conversation today with George W. Bush and Jeb Bush. Certainly at a moment like this, all of that is set aside. All of those hard feelings are forgotten. Condolences at the national level radiate from the office of the presidency. When any American president dies, partisanship all fades away. And the idea that the institution of the presidency matters and the country's reflection on anyone who held that position dominates. And clearly President Trump is doing everything he can to be gracious in recognition of that long-standing American truth and tradition and be respectful of the Bush family at this time of mourning. One thing I think it's worth pointing out, I've listened to Donald Trump talk several times, both as president and as a candidate, as one of the fundamental strengths he thinks lead to success. And he often simplifies it, Rena, this way, don't ever give up, don't ever quit. Well, if there's anyone in American political life about whom that can be said, George H.W. Bush is one of them. Not only did he have a career in politics, but he suffered many setbacks, many disappointments. There were twice he thought he was going to be vice president, both with Gerald Ford and or twice with Gerald Ford, actually, and it never, never happened. And he was forced to take other lesser posts in the Republican Party out of loyalty. Then he ran for president in 1980, lost, became Ronald Reagan's vice president. I mean, he never, ever gave up in his pursuit of higher political office or deeper public service. And in that sense, what Donald Trump has always told audiences is the key to a long and successful life. George H.W. Bush lived it out. Persistence in politics and in life, a lesson for all of us. Major Garrett, thank you very much for joining us, Major.